Hey, this is Professor Perez again. Today we're going to look at an introduction to the distributive property. And of course, we've got to get Charlie out here. He better be ready. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? Yeah. All right. Here we go, right here. Introduction to the distributive property. So what the distributive property is, is what we're going to do is we're going to distribute a number across an addition or a subtraction using multiplication. Let me give you an example here. 2 times 5 plus 3. Notice the 5 plus 3 is in parentheses. Before we get to the distributive property, what we could do is add the two numbers in the parentheses. You'll see when we get to order of operations, that's, that is what we're supposed to do first. Okay, that's coming up soon. So watch. We take what's in the parentheses, 5 plus 3. What's 5 plus 3, Charlie? 8. 8. Don't forget we have a 2. Now, what's the operation, Charlie? It's 2 outside of a parentheses. There is no operation written down, so it's assumed to be what? Multiplication. Multiplication. And so 2 times 8 is what, Charlie? 16. 16. Same as 8 times 2. Now, same problem, but now we're going to demonstrate the distributive property. Notice there's a 2 outside the parentheses. That 2 outside the parentheses means you're going to multiply. But you don't have to add what's in the parentheses. First, you can add 5 plus 3. But what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the 2 to the 5 and to the 3 by multiplication. Watch, Charlie. We first start with 2 times 5, so we'll bring that down. We did 2 times 5, and now in the parentheses our operation was addition, so we'll bring that down. And now we take the 2 and multiply it to the 3, and that's 2 times 3. Now notice the 2 was distributed to each the 5 and to the 3, and the operation is multiplication. And now what's 2 times 5, Charlie? 10. 10, same as 5 times 2. And what's 2 times 3? 6. 6, same as 3 times 2. And anyway, what's 10 plus 6, Charlie? 16. 16, and notice the two answers are exactly the same. 16. Now, of course, most of you are probably saying, well, I'm just going to do the parentheses first. Yeah, but you can't do that all the time. You'll see. Because I know you're asking, when am I ever going to use the distributive property? Well, you'll see very soon. Now, same problem, Charlie. 2 times 5 plus 3. Now, somebody uh, mentioned this technique to me, so I'm going to go ahead and show it. 2 times 5 plus 3 basically means you have two 5 plus 3's being added together, which is true. Okay? And 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3, you can add in any order you want. Remember, adding numbers, you can add in any order you want. And we can just reorder it as 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3, which is 10 plus 6, which is again 16. It's another way of looking at what's 2 times 5 plus 3 in parentheses, which is fine. Okay. Now, here's an example. We haven't discussed variables yet in this class, but we're going to demonstrate it right now with this distributive property. Now, you cannot add x plus 3 in the parentheses. Some people think that x plus 3 is 3x. No, it's not 3x. It is 3x if you want to repeat this class, Charlie. Okay. x plus 3, you cannot add those two together. Okay. 3x actually means 3 times x. We'll get to those later. But x plus 3, you can't add. So are you stuck? No. You can apply the distributive property. You can distribute the 2 to both the x and to the 3. So 2 times x is written 2x. 2x means 2 times x. And our operation is addition in the parentheses, so we'll bring that down. And we'll take 2 times 3, which is what, Charlie? 6. 6. Now again, you cannot add 2x plus 6, and that is your answer. So you took 2 times the parentheses x plus 3 and applied the distributive property, and then end up with 2 plus 6. So we'll be dealing with that a little bit later in the semester, and you'll be dealing with that a lot in beginning algebra, which is the next class. Okay. Now, let's look at a, a subtraction problem in the parentheses, Charlie. Let's do the parentheses first. What's 7 subtract 3? 4. 4, and you're multiplying by 2, which does give you 8. Okay. Now, let's apply the distributive property. What do you do, Charlie? Distribute. 2 times 7 is... Okay. And your operation is? Subtraction. Subtract. Bring that down. And then what? 2 times 3. Okay. 2 times 3. That's right. All right. Now, we just... 2 times 7 is what, Charlie? 14. Okay, bring down your subtraction. 2 times 3 is? 
six. Six, and what's 14 subtract six? Eight. Eight, same answer, okay. Now we go to this next one. Here we're gonna distribute across a subtraction and an addition. Same process, we take two times seven, bring down your operation, which is a subtraction, and then we have two times three, which is gonna be six, bring down our addition, and then we have two times two, right? Okay, so let's do two times seven is what, Charlie? 14. Subtract two times three. Six. Add two times two. Four. Very nice, okay. And remember, you gotta work left to right. 14 subtract six is what, Charlie? Eight. Eight, and we still gotta add the four, and what do we get? 12. 12, very nice there, Charlie, yes. Now, the problem could have been, uh, the answer could have been gotten by first doing the operations in the parentheses. Seven subtract three is four, and four plus two is six, and two times six is 12. Yes, that would be faster. But we're trying to demonstrate the distributive property, how it can be used. Okay, well, let's do two times 43. Well, let's think about how do we do this? Well, first, let's write the 43 in expanded form, okay? 2 times 40 plus 3, and if we distribute the 2 through, what's 2 times 40, Charlie? 80. 80, and we have an addition, and 2 times 3 is? 6. 6, and that gives you 86. So this is another way of looking at 2 times 43. Well, a lot of us tend to want to use this vertical format. What you're soon going to see is this vertical format, the reason it works is because you're using the distributive property. It's exactly what you're doing, watch. 43 times 2. The first thing you're taught to do is do what, Charlie? 2 times 3. 2 times 3, which is 6, yes. See, it's a distributive property. 2 multiplied by 3. And then you take the what? You two go times diagonally four. and go 2 times 4, which is 8, and you bring it down. Notice you put the 8 in the tens place because you have 8 tens, which is actually 80. And so 86 is just 80 plus 6. That's your vertical format. Watch, let's do a more complicated one. Let's do six times 134. Don't get scared. What we're gonna do is write 134 in expanded form. So in expanded form, Charlie, what's 134? 100 plus, that's right, 100 plus 30 plus four. Okay, now apply the distributive property. What do we get, Charlie? What do we do first? Six times 100. Six times 100 is 600. Bring down our operation. What's next? Six times 30. Six times 30, which is what, Charlie? 180. 180, because 6 times 3 is 18, and 6 times 30 is 180. Okay, Charlie, 6 times 4 is what? 24. 24, okay. So we work left to right, 600 plus 180 is 780, plus 24, which is 804. That is the answer. Now, let's do the vertical format. Now, we're going to do a vertical format without carrying over. You'll see what I mean. Watch, we first start with 6 times 4, which is what, Charlie? 24. 24, that's the distributive property. And then we do six times three, which is 18. Now notice the three was in the tens place, so the 18, the eight, is written in the tens place, and we bring down a placeholder, 180. And then we go six times one, which is six. It's in the hundreds place, we have six hundreds, and we put in our placeholder zero, and you add them all together, and the first column is what, Charlie? Four. Four. Okay, let me help you out, two and eight is 10, Put your zero, carry your one, and one plus one plus six is eight. It's 804. That's without the carryover. Well, let's finish this lecture by doing the carryover here. Okay, here we go, Charlie, pay attention. Six times four is 24. Put the four, carry the two. Six times three is 18, right? Add the two is 20. Put your zero down, carry the two, and six times one is six plus two is 804. So there you go, that's the vertical format. But these vertical, vertical formats are using the distributive property. So there you go. That's your introduction to the distributive property. So we're gonna work on multiplication more in the future. Anyway, keep up with your homework and we'll see you all again soon.